this edition of Extra Butter. Ben Affleck drops by to talk about the way back to the Oscars. Speaking of Oscars, it's the most Academy Award winning studio on the planet. We're talking about Pixar, their latest. Onward heads to Blu-ray and DVD. Chris Pratt and Tom Holland heads to our show. Talking about brothers. Oh yeah, speaking of Oscars, Sonic the Hedgehog won't win any. But it's still Jim Carrey Riffic. Jim and James Marsden stop by to talk about that and more on this very special at home because they're all at home editions of Extra Butter. Hey, what's going on, you guys? Yeah, I almost slipped and killed both me and my son, who's the camera person, because we're wearing socks and running on a hardwood floor. Why? We're doing the show at home. And you're hanging out too. My name is Marcus Allen. This is Extra Butter, where we talk about movies the way you talk about movies. And the way you're talking about movies is what can I watch at home right now? People say, why are you still doing this show? Well, because more celebrities are now doing interviews with us from home, which is oddly intimate. And more movies are now being straight to streaming, which means you're consuming more than ever. With that said, let's talk about who we're consuming it with. One of my best movie-going friends is this lady, Kelly Savannah Deaton. How are you? I'm great. How are you? You know, I'm doing exactly what you're doing. Now, what's unique for me uh, is that I cover movies. You, however, when you're not covering movies, you travel around the world. And since the pandemic started, you probably would have been to 13 different continents. How is it being locked at home? You know, I've been going through all my travel photos and it's definitely making me sad because you can't go anywhere. I mean, a treat right now to me, it used to be going to Santorini or, you know, Bali. And now a treat to me is going to Target. I have to decide whether it's better to go to Target or pretty much Target. That's all I have now, Mark. It's terrible. But next summer and hopefully the rest of this year when the pandemic lifts, we can all start traveling all around the world again. It makes me happy. And until then, we travel virtually, courtesy of the lives of others in the movie. So let's switch gears and talk about new to home video. It's Sonic the Hedgehog, a movie that when it came out theatrically, you said, this is not my cup of tea, but then you said you actually liked it. There's one name and one name only, which will explain why I liked it, and that's Jim Carrey. Blah, 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 blah. We've created a monster we won't be able to control. I mean, it's been a while since we've seen Jim Carrey be the star and be his Jim Carrey self, you know, like the 90s Jim Carrey, the gem of a human being, and that's in full force in this movie. So that's why I actually really loved it. Amen. And we went behind the scenes on the set. You could see that 90s Jim Carrey twinkle back in his eye. Take a look. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a professional. Yeah. Hey. When I got the call to do Sonic, it was really exciting. Good morning, my rural chum. Mr. Dr. Robotnik. He is a madman. Ugh, I can't with that guy. You're mine, hedgehog. That was an illegal left, by the way. I didn't know. Of course, he's a 300 IQ, so it took me a week and a half to prepare. Robotnik wants to control humanity with his machines. Sonic is a power that he needs to control the world. Is that all you got? No, but thank you for asking. Uh-oh, that's not good. I just thought you might like a latte with steamed Austrian goat milk. Of course I want a latte. I love the way you make them! You know, an impossible feat would be the straight guy to Jim Carrey, and I can think no one better than James Marsden, but I gotta ask, and this is typically the question I lean on you for, <laughs> were you a fan of the James Marsden is a hottie club? Um, yeah. Are you kidding? James Marsden and The Notebook and X-Men. I mean, you can't really go wrong. He's And he's so sweet. Doesn't he just seem like the sweetest guy? I'm a James yeah. Marsden fan through and through. Now, yeah, there, every now and then, you know, you sit down with these celebs and you think, would I be buddies with this person? And, you know, they're the types like the George Clooney's that you think, yeah, I'd like to hang out with you. We'd probably find trouble. James Marsden's the kind of guy that you sit down with and you think, I'd like to be buddies with you because you're the kind of guy I could probably call if I had a flat tire. Yeah, and the question you have to ask yourself is, would he want to be buddies with you, Mark? And I think we all know the answer to that. That's right. I brought it up and he said no. Actually, I didn't. We talked about Jim Carrey. Take a look. Not a bad day's work when you get to riff with Jim Carrey in a major motion picture. Yeah, yeah. It, it, uh, it is, it, in, uh, on one hand, the most exciting, like, kind of career highlight for me. On the other hand, it's like, it sort of uh, highlights uh, how much better he is at riffing than you are. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was pretty special, and he was, he was great. Just watching him work at every moment needed to be inspired and feel new and different, and he would surprise you with things you just would never have guessed he would do. And 
keeping it, you know, keep from laughing and, and, and ruining the take was a, was a, was a, an effort. I can only imagine there are miles of outtakes from people blowing character or oh. just stuff that he's bringing to the table. Yeah, I've seen the movie and I'm like, oh, where's, the, where's the, the take where he does this or where he does this or does that? And you watch it and you're like, it doesn't need it, but like, you have to choose. Like, you right. can't have this take and that take, but his, every take of his 10 or 15 different like, things that he rattles off are brilliant in their own way. And it's cool to see him just have fun again like that, yeah. and, and uh, you know, be that great Jim Carrey that we that, that uh, you know I grew up emulating. Yeah, you could tell he was so geeked out to work with Jim Carrey, and who wouldn't be? Uh, as far as the movie goes, when it came out theatrically, I thought eh, it's okay. But I've got to say, in these pandemic times, when you're home trying to keep the kid busy, th this is a great babysitter that won't irritate the parents. A hundred percent. A lot of kids' movies do. They are not one for adults, but this one will have you laughing alongside your kids, and that's all you can ever hope for when you watch like a kid movie, you know? And it's '90s Jim Carrey. Yeah, like you said, Jim Carrey is back at it, and James Marsden is, uh, he carries it. The only thing better than one James Marsden is two. Two James Marsden. Like in Dead to Me, season two, there's two James Marsdens. I'm so glad that you segued me into that. I was just going to talk about that, because I just binged watch season two. It is phenomenal. Are we plot spoiling by saying there's two of them? Uh, maybe a little bit, no. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, maybe a little bit. I'm glad you segued me because I wanted to talk about these other ladies right now. Linda Cardellini is phenomenal in it. The award nominated Christina Applegate as well. We didn't plot spoil. We were very careful not to plot spoil when we talked. Take a look. Nice to see you guys. Nice to see you too. Awesome work in this. Thank you. I need to tap dance as long as I can because I can't talk about this because like I'm this close to giving stuff away. It's okay. We could, we know how to talk about it without talking about it. Yeah. But so what's cool. really creepy is what happens in normal neighborhoods. I think right. that's the essence of this. Yeah. That is the essence of this. This is the this show is, it's we we describe it as like a a tromedy suspense mm -hmm. thriller. Mm -hmm. Does that does that feel does that feel about right to you? Yeah, that's about but right. It's, but it's a real it's a real look um, at grief and how people deal with grief in different ways. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna not say anything. No, so you're <laughs> yeah, exactly. very quiet. So hard. I think people that are grieving should watch this show for escapism and some life. Yeah, too. yeah. Nice to see you guys. Nice to see you too. Right, I'm a cross the room hugger. Okay. Yeah, in this day and age, it's important that we talk about movies and at the same time, there's nothing wrong with having extra buttered popcorn while you watch series like this. What I love about Dead to Me, every single episode ends with your jaw on the floor, drooling that popcorn butter because you can't believe that just happened. I cannot wait for season three. And this is one of those shows that after you, you're finished watching, you're actually sad. <laughs> You're so sad to see Judy and Jen go away. I know, I'm sad. And when I'm sad, I turn to a Pixar movie. Hey, can you stick around for a minute? Of course. Awesome, thank you, Segway Helper. When we come back, Chris Pratt and Tom Holland hang out to talk about one of my favorite Pixar movies ever. It is Onward, We're also joined by Chris's brother. Why? You'll see when Extra Butter continues. Butter, just hanging out talking about movies. Kelly Savannah Deaton, travel blogger, host du jour. How are you doing, Kelly? I'm fabulous. How are you? Good. What are you eating? Did I catch you eating something? No, I wish. I was wish I was in France eating croissants, but instead I'm here talking to you. And by that, what she meant was she wishes she could plop in Disney's Blu-ray DVD of Onward and talk about Pixar's latest movie. I love this movie so much. Talk about why you loved it. At first, I didn't think I was going to love it. I'm like, eh, another Pixar movie. It seems kind of silly. But the star power in this and the brotherly love between Chris Pratt and Tom Holland is so adorable. And it definitely makes this movie way better than the typical Pixar movies. And that's saying something because Pixar films are already incredible. Now, you know, Pixar will probably answer this with a great movie about sisters, but right now it is about the brothers. And what I love about it, Tom Holland in real life has a great connection to his brothers, as does Chris. In fact, I snuck one of them in to goof around with him, courtesy of Tom. Take a look. We said uh, viewer questions, if you have any viewer questions. So we have this guy that oh, wow. has a viewer question. Oh, that's question. my brother. Wait, go no ahead, go. way. Hold on, you blew the gag. Oh. Yeah, go, go ahead, sir. Hey, oh my gosh. This is so exciting. Tom Holland, you are like my favorite Avenger. I'm just freaking out right now. Is that actually your brother? <laughs> it's literally my brother. And this is just the coolest thing in the world. That's Spider-Man. I can't believe... I thought... Wait a minute. I thought that was... Chris Hemsworth was your brother in the movie. 
I no, hope I was hoping Pratt. it was Chris Hemsworth, but we got we got Chris <laughs> Chris Pratt instead, which is also was, good. It was my two favorite Avengers, Spider-Man and Thor. And Thor. And, but I mean, it makes sense, you know. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> all, right, all right, the the gag is blown. So now, since I have brother to brother, what's the best thing about your brother, Chris Pratt? That he knows Tom best Holland. <laughs> right? Easy. Wait, no. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, well, stay on target. Say yeah, some no. good things about your brother. What do you share? You say this, I, I'll, I'll say this movie, Coley, I cannot wait for you to see this movie. Just like Dan, who, who directed and wrote it, it's like a love letter to his older brother. This movie is going to, I'm telling you, you know how like Radio Flyer makes you cry your eyes out? This movie, this movie is designed, I honestly feel like I'm in a, my life is a simulation and this movie was made to make you cry. So I, I cannot wait for you to see this movie. It's absolutely a love letter to this guy's older brother. You, you want to know what, man? I can't, I, I can't say enough about how proud I am about you. And one day you'll be in a position where you could get me in a, uh, a movie, maybe about being brothers or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, not to go too serious or get us both weeping right here, but both you and I have lost parents, and this movie kind of speaks to how to deal with that. Uh, I found it helpful as an adult. How about you? A hundred percent. I mean, definitely bring tissues like any Pixar movie, but it definitely, I think, teaches little kids. I mean, every Pixar movie is a life lesson, right? It's like a manual, how to live life. But this one especially hits home a lot harder, like you said, for us. And I think for a lot of kids out there. So I definitely think it's worth watching and buying. I think you should buy it. Amen, which is why we're talking about it now. Sure, it's been streaming for a minute on Disney+, Plus, but now you can get the luxurious Blu-ray DVD. I highly recommend this 4K edition of it because the extras on it are phenomenal. All right, so uh, take a break. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the new Amazon Plus series, Janelle Monet in Homecoming. It is phenomenal. How do I know? I've already binge-watched season two. Janelle Monet herself joins me from her home next. Hey, welcome back. It is Extra Butter TV. Thanks for hanging out. Be sure and like and subscribe on YouTube. And if you're not watching on YouTube, maybe watch on YouTube sometime. And did I mention like and subscribe while you're there? Also, shout out to the men and women all over the world watching on AFN, the America Forces Network. We appreciate all your service. Thank you for all that you do. All right. It's Extra Butter TV on any social media. Amazon Plus new series, Homecoming, season two on the way. Everything all right, miss? What's your name? I don't know. What is your address? I don't know. How about your birthday? I don't know. We're trying to understand what happened to you. It was like the people around me were keeping a secret. Like we were in a movie. And everyone knew we were in a movie except for me. Now, if you remember, Julia Roberts played the lead in season one. She's still the executive producer. She handpicked my buddy, Janelle Monae. That's right. I said my buddy. Are we buddies? No, but I used to do radio, so I've been talking to her for her entire career, and I caught up with her early in the morning. You can tell. I think I woke her up. Take a look. Right, this is a bad sign this morning if you're yawning already, Miss Janelle. How are you? Listen, I don't know what time it is. I don't know what planet I'm on. I am just trying to figure out uh, who, I, who I am, actually. Isn't that kind of what everyone's saying with this at-homeness that we're experiencing right now? <laughs> yeah, it feels like a really bad science fiction film, and I'm ready for it to end. <laughs> Speaking of really good fiction, let's talk about Homecoming. How geeked out are you that this is launching, that the world gets to experience what you work so hard on? I'm very excited. I'm, I'm ready. I had an opportunity to see um, this season myself, and I must say, humbly, this is this is my favorite TV show, and it's not even out yet. And I think that this journey of self-discovery uh, that you're going on with 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 um, with Jackie uh, is a wild ride. Well, congratulations on everything. You know, I've been doing radio and television most of my life, and I've been interviewing you your entire career, you and have. I love the journey you personally have taken. I love seeing you on this poster and seeing you in this series, and congrats on everything. Thank you so much, Mark. It's such an honor, such a pleasure to talk to you always. 
She is a remarkable human being and an equally remarkable talent. Loved her in Hidden Figures, her breakout performance, and oh my gosh, wait till you see all of the cliffhangers in Homecoming Season 2. Oh wait, look, she's back. Uh, while you're back, stick around because coming up next, we're going to be talking about something that I'm very excited about for a multitude of reasons. Ben Affleck is back. This may be another Academy Award nomination for him. We'll be talking about The Way Back as Extra Butter continues. Don't move. Thanks for hanging out with us. We're about to wrap things up, going out with a big finish because a movie that I found important for a multitude of ways heads to your home theater. However you're watching, big or small screens alike, it's Ben Affleck in The Way Back. Kelly Savannah Deaton, travel blogger extraordinaire. Actually, how would you describe yourself? Influencer, blogger, moviegoer, croissant enthusiast? All of the above. You just did such an awesome job doing it. I can't top that. All right. Uh, truth be told, full disclosure, about five years ago, my life was transformed when I decided I probably should stop drinking. So you can only imagine how weepy and influenced I was by this movie. Did you think about me when you watched it? Oh, Mark, but that's so awesome that you chose to put your, turn your life around like that. I think when I saw this movie, I did think of you and I thought a lot of other about a lot of other people that I know have gone through this as well. And you know why this movie works so well is Ben Affleck personally has admitted his struggles with alcohol himself. So instead of kind of just sugarcoating it and putting a Hollywood spin on it, he got deep and he got gritty with his addiction and kind of showcased all that talent in this film and also during all of the press instead of shying away from everything you know when people would ask him questions he answered every single question about his marriage to jennifer garner about his alcoholism about anything and everything and that's why i think this movie is going to take ben affleck all the way through award season yeah no kidding uh, imagine what it must be like to be the producer director of this film when you get green lit a week into production ben affleck so goes into rehab actually kind of pausing a movie where he's playing a guy that probably needs to go into rehab. Yeah, and I think that's why it was kind of cathartic for him, actually, because as he was going through it in real life, he's making this movie as well. Yeah, I caught up with him uh, on the set with some of his amazing co-stars to talk about it. And as you said, I was transparent, he was transparent. All's transparent. Take a look. You know, for once, I started prepping for an interview. And I sat down and I looked and I thought, 23 years, 23 years I've been sitting down with you like this. What talking was the uh, first thing that we you I was your first interview, first on deck for Goodwill Hunting. Wow. About 15 blocks from where we are right now. Oh, wow, that's wild. Yeah, that was a long time ago. And, uh, and I'll be talking to you guys in 23 years about the same thing. Look forward to it. Well, they're both very talented guys. I wouldn't be surprised in one bit. I hope they give me a job. <laughs> I mean, we should, we should all be so one. blessed. I'll tell you why it's so important to me, because uh, crashing in my room that entire year of 1997, crashing in my room was my best friend Joe Carnahan. No he would way. He would sell scripts, uh, try to get his first movie launched in New York and L.A., and he'd beat the streets while I'm in talking to the likes of you. I love Joe. He's a good guy. I, I love doing Smoking Aces with him, and he's just, he's one of the biggest, uh, like, he's just, he's just an enthusiastic director. Like, he's such a supporter. You feel so kind of, like, taken care of with Joe, and uh, everybody who works with him loves him. Yeah, it's passion in a bottle. Fast forward, so on the set of A-Team, he had Bradley Cooper in that movie, and he was the first person to impress upon me that sober's better, and I'm four years sober now in front of Is him. that right? And nice. alcohol put me behind bars, so you can only imagine how much this movie is speaking wow. to me right now. Wow, well, congratulations, four years, that's pretty good. Well, congratulations to you, and thank I you. thank all thank of you for being in a project that, from the get-go, is so transparent. This is more than a movie. It, doesn't hit the sports cliches, it doesn't hit the addiction cliches, it transcends that, and the way you guys are talking about all of this is so Thanks. important. Yeah, I would, I just, I, I think I would hate to see like a cliched addiction movie. I think any alcoholic or addict, like they're the last people that want to see some sort of like predictable, you know, preachy story. It was important to me that it be honest, real, and, and that it subvert those expectations, both as a sports movie, where you expect, okay, now this is going to happen, and as a movie about addiction, which have kind of classic tropes that you've come to expect. And this movie resists those in a way that uh, I think makes it more satisfying because it makes it feel more real. Well, you know, hard to believe that was this year. Uh, although I was over six feet away from him, a less than socially distanced interview from just a couple of months ago. Hard to believe that was that recent. I know, isn't that crazy how much the world has shut down? But also before the pandemic, 
how awesome is Ben Affleck in a movie? But outside of the movie too, when it wrapped, he jo he asked his co-stars, "Hey, where's the one place you'd want to go to celebrate?" And they replied, "Oh, hey, we'll go to Vegas." Thinking that you know it was no big thing and it was a joke that they would just go to a cast dinner or something, and Ben Affleck took them to Vegas. I mean, come on, that's amazing that he would do that for like his entire cast on a jet, the five star yeah, yeah. treatment all the way. Only Ben Affleck, I feel like, would do that. So bravo, Ben. Exactly, Kelly Savannah Deaton. Great to catch up with you as always. Where do we find you? At Kelly Savannah Deaton, all one word. Awesome. Thanks so much for hanging out. Kelly, uh, it's a bittersweet ending to this show. I've got an announcement to make. What? Why is it bittersweet? We're losing our co-executive producer, largely the reason we got rows of Emmys back there. Josh Lyle is leaving. He's decided to go to his private home in Maui, and we won't be seeing him anymore. <laughs> and we can't do the show without you, Josh Lyle. You can't go. Whoa, what are you talking about? Why are you such a crybaby, Mark? He's still going to be doing everything the same. The show... He's going to be doing it remotely. He's still here. He's still going to be the co-executive producer just doing it remotely from his Hawaii compound? Exactly, yes. Where he <laughs> should invite us. All right. Well, I'll miss seeing you in person, Josh Lyle. Thanks for all you do. Uh, with that said, any final words, Kelly Savannah Deaton, before we go? Um, no, but if you can find a hairstylist for me, let me know. Because look at this. I've been humbled, Mark. I'm not a real blonde. This is my PSA for help. And now we know. It turns out neither is Josh. Josh, thanks for all you do. You guys, be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube. And that's it. We'll see you next time on Extra Butter. Bye. Hello, Mark? Hello? The Zoom is still on. I can see the credits. Mark? Mark? Every time, I swear. Every time.